abundant as this power is please listen now it says it is according to the power that works in us these possibilities beyond what we ask beyond what we think is limited by a rule I want you to listen now the rule is that it is affected by the power that works in us not the power available to walk the power that works in us not the power available to walk there is limitless power available to walk but what the nations will see is the power that works in us not the power available in Christ are we learning now this is very powerful I wrote something here and I want you to please listen according to the power that works in us means limited by the allowance that our consecration our yieldedness and our personal press gives the spirit when the Bible says according to the power that works in us it means God can be constrained his power can be limited by the space that the saints give for that power to flow out limited limited by the allowance that our consecration limited by the allowance that our yieldedness limited by the allowance that our personal press gives the spirit to manifest that power wow now we come to the subject of the holy spirit and the believer here paul having justified the fact that god is all powerful and he's willing to allow such tremendous dimensions of his power to show up in the world of men he wants to get glory in the church and the way he gets glory in the church is to make tremendous power available which is dynamic in its working but he's saying that in as much as that is a reality the power that comes out through every believer is the dimension of power that the nations will see that means if they see a weak Jesus that weak Jesus came through the lens of a weak believer are we together now it is according to the power that worketh in us for many years I did not understand that scripture I just meant it's according to the power that flows from the Holy Spirit and that is correct but then I got to understand by the Spirit that it is beyond that it means the allowance that is given to the Holy Spirit by every believer is the limit to which his power flows like a river now I have taught you here that the Holy Spirit listen carefully is both the custodian and the conveyor of God's power the Holy Spirit is both the custodian and the conveyor everything power is within his office the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit it is impossible to do and discuss the business of power isolating the person the office and the ministry of the Holy Spirit Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed the word the word was anointed had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all that that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him Jesus as the word had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost there is mentioned again Acts chapter 19 from verse 2 he met certain disciples and he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, We've not even heard. That means if there is a power problem within the believers, there is something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit that believers need to learn. We have understood the word 
and honestly i tell you commendably there is a very sound communication of god's word across the body but i think that most people have not come to appreciate the person and the ministry of the holy spirit i am personally convinced that that is one of the the missing links we have not incorporated a thorough knowledge of the person and the ministry of the holy spirit we understand principles nothing wrong with that we understand mysteries nothing wrong with that but we have not engaged the person and the office of the spirit to make tremendous power available through us there is none of these people the saints especially in modern history who have been used mightily by god they were people of the word but they will tell you that they were people who understood and had a rich fellowship with the holy spirit i do not know anybody who works in authentic power at any level who has not cultivated a rich fellowship with the holy spirit are we together the holy spirit is both the conveyor the custodian and even the administrator of god's power romans chapter 8 and verse 2 i believe please give it to us there's a there's a name i like what the holy spirit is called here the holy spirit is called the spirit of life say that after me the spirit he's not just called the helper the advocate the paraclete as we call it he is called here the spirit of life and that there is an operation that powers him in the life of the believer is called the law of the spirit of life an operation that releases the full potential of the spirit of life and it can bring freedom and liberty to men let me tell you this i credit a lot of the happenings in my life and this ministry today to the ministry of the holy spirit i do not ignore the word of god this ministry is called koinonia there is a reason why it is called the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship the sharing together the participation of the holy spirit to rest and to abide with you forever many believers have not come into rich fellowship with the holy spirit the holy spirit let me repeat one last time is the custodian the conveyor and even the administrator of the power of god if there is scarceness of power flowing through you in diagnosing the problem you need to diagnose your relationship with the holy spirit and then diagnose your yieldedness let me say this very quickly when it has to do with the ministry of life and power the holy spirit is called a river jesus began to speak and he made a very profound statement he said on the third day of the feast he said if anyone thirst let him come let him drink and he said that out of his belly listen carefully i know you sing it but now just listen because many people who sing that song don't honestly know what they are singing they just like the song and they believe it is true but it says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters i think that should be john 7 am i right verse 30 is it 39 look for it for me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water verse 39 now says this spake he this spake he of the spirit this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on should receive so that river he's talking about is speaking about the life giving ministry of the holy spirit flowing through the saints and he likens it to a river if you know anything about a river it is not static hallelujah one time they were doing a tour for us in the u.s and just the history of america and they showed you know a, a particular river that was flowing it looked like just a tiny river but it flowed right into the sea and then they were telling a lot of stories around it you know it was used to generate electricity at one point you know at the infancy of the whole history of, of america 
but I was I was intrigued by the fact that what you would call a small river they said sometimes when the rains are very heavy I mean it could just fill a particular space and I was just watching that river the Bible says out of your belly He's, it doesn't mean out of your stomach no there's nothing in your stomach for the Holy Spirit yes it's just your digestive system when he says belly it doesn't mean your stomach is a prophetic expression are we together that from your innermost being your spirit watch this now so where does it flow from he never said it flows from the throne when you read revelations you will see that there is a river that flows from the throne am i right on that and that river brings healings the bible says that it flows to trees and the leaves are for the healing of the nations now jesus is speaking and he says out of your belly that when you receive the spirit something happens and out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters the question is it flows to where flows to where in the similitude of the river that flows from the throne because now a throne has been established within you where Christ is Lord and there is a parallel of what happened that John saw in the throne that a river came out from the throne and it brought life it brought healing and because you have given allowance for that throne to be replicated within you there must also be a parallel expression that a river begins to flow and that that river flows through you it brings healing you want to know what the river does go to Ezekiel chapter 47 he measured a thousand cubits it was to my ankle he measured a thousand cubits it was to my knees he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits and the Bible says it was an overflowing river please give it to us and as the river flow it begins to bring every death into life that's what it does it's a life-giving river let it flow right here right now afterwards he measured a thousand and it was a river i could not pass over for the waters were risen waters to swim in and a river that could not be passed over watch now verse 6 verse 6 please he said son of man he brought me and caused me to return and you know to the brink of the river verse 7 there's something I'm looking for and when he saw that he saw many trees on one side and on the other verse 8 and he said that this one they go down to the desert where does the river go to towards the east of the country and towards the desert and into the sea and he said it comes into the sea and the waters waters there talks of men the waters shall be healed that when that river flows it gets into waters and then brings healing verse 8 I, verse 9 i think it is i'm looking for where the fish it shall come to pass that everything that lives which move it whithersoever the river shall come it shall what look at this mystery it is already alive but that if it touches that river it gets life indeed and then it says and there shall be a great multitude of fish say harvest one more time say harvest because the waters shall come for they shall be healed and everything shall live whither the river cometh that's the implication of the ministry of the holy spirit that when the holy spirit is allowed to find expression in an individual now watch this there are two ways the holy spirit makes a vessel a worthy conduit of power number one it is called renewal it's an inner walking of the spirit so when the holy spirit comes he does not just come to empower you the goal is to empower you but it does not start with empowerment watch this now it starts with sanctification and renewal now there are two levels of sanctification theologically there is instant sanctification that happens to your spirit man at salvation but there is progressive sanctification that happens by your engaging the ministry of the word and the holy spirit are we together most people 
think when the Holy Spirit comes, his next assignment is to produce power. It is the reason why the Holy Spirit can barely find expression through them. When the Spirit of God comes upon any life, and listen, if you are a man of God in ministry, listen, it will help you to know how to raise and train people. When you expose people to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the first thing to teach them about the Holy Spirit is not empowerment. Empowerment is a latter ministry of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, the first thing is sanctification and renewal. This is the first dimension of transformation. Sanctification and renewal is an inner work. I think Paul was talking about husbands and wives in Ephesians chapter 5 and I think verse 26. He talks about the woman being the church that she is washed by the water, the washing of the water by the word. How does he sanctify and cleanse? By the washing of the water and the word. How does God sanctify and cleanse? He purifies your conscience. He purifies your mentality. There is the work of sanctification and renewal that happens to that believer. Then when you are sanctified and renewed, the next level of transformation is called enlightenment. You can be sanctified and renewed and not enlightened. So there are two phases to, trans to transformation. One is called renewal, sanctification that produces renewal. That one is not giving you a new information. It's destroying the old man and the whole software that causes that old man to be fruitful in your life. But then when that cleaning process is done, he needs to now begin to show you the ways of the spirit. It's called enlightenment. Paul prayed that prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 down to 19. That the eyes of your understanding, that is the inner work of the spirit. Notice he never started with power. Even though power was later introduced in the subject. So that the eyes of your understanding, that's how it starts. Being enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints now power can come verse 19 and the exceeding greatness of his power to us word to who believe according to the working of his mighty power let me tell you this i have learned this by experience and by the message of god i have seen people violate this formula and remain powerless in the spirit i have seen people honor this formula and evolve into commendable levels of power you never will be able to transmute the power of the holy spirit beyond the level of alignment and allowance that your person as a vessel gives him that means if you give the holy spirit this little room that is how small his power will flow through you the possibilities that should be produced from your life as a result of abundance of power never happen. The reason is because there is so much the Holy Spirit wants to push through you as a vessel and as a channel. But your disalignment, bankruptcy of sanctification, renewal and enlightenment does not allow him, does not allow his power to flow through you. This is true. The difference between my yesterday version and my today version is not necessarily my size, it's not necessarily my voice, it's not necessarily the platform. It is the level of the yieldedness to have allowed the Holy Spirit to do an inner work. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. This inner work takes a long time. It's not something that is done in one week. The inner work is likened to clearing a drainage clearing a drainage have you seen people try to clear a, a drainage that is blocking the flow of water drainage one of the days i was going to visit which department now i cannot remember and it was raining seriously and you know the the roads you could barely see the road because there was water everywhere and i looked at the drainage and it was clear that the drainage was blocked something had blocked the drainage and the water was just spilling all over the road that's what happens to people spiritually all those debris all those those things those those things that fill your heart are we together when the holy spirit comes he begins to walk it gradually 
taking all those things out of you and when he clears that drainage there can be a flow and once there is that flow life begins to come from you to people you will know that that drainage has been cleared because of the abundance of the miraculous that flows through your hands you will see an ease in spiritual operation you will begin to see that it does not take time again for you to pray for the sick there is that that that, that debris had been taken away and the flow is there for many Christians including pastors the channel for the Holy Spirit to flow his power and life to the nations has been blocked with all kinds of nonsense jealousy competition flesh worldliness carnality everything like debris has been heaped upon it so we come to people and we say in the name of Jesus and you can literally sense almost for want of word like a struggle from the Holy Spirit because you are the only vessel available there that he can use and we make the Holy Spirit look like a liar the reason is because of disalignment in the vessels according to the power that works within you the sick through your life will be healed not just according to the abundance of grace according to the power according to the allowance that your yieldedness allows when I found this I began a project to pray you know I said God expand me expand me if it means to change the wineskin change it expand me because the kind of revival we want to see fall upon the nations will not it, they, you cannot put a very narrow channel it needs abundance of life giving water are we together someone who comes to you and says i have been plagued by a curse for 100 years is destroyed my grandfather great grandfather let me tell you theo theoretically speaking it looks like all you need to say is satan get lost you try it and see if it will go it's more than what you see written here. The eyes of your understanding must be open to see that there are rules of engagement. There are men who will carry God and will literally be dripping the life and the power of God. You look at certain situations without speaking because of the abundance of that power. It's like torrents of power flows from you to everybody around you. You are bringing miracles and healing. Every time people see you, you are welcome. You know why? You are welcome because you are a career of genuine power apostle please there is a situation here what is it my family is about to go into this array no not when I'm there I am an ambassador of the kingdom in the name of Jesus and whilst you are speaking you are speaking there is abundance of power the Holy Ghost says thank you for being a yielded vessel because the amount of spiritual power required to bring the result that family desires your yieldedness can allow it let me tell you this every manifestation of the spirit that seems difficult to find expression through your life is not necessarily difficult because God does not want it to manifest it is that the Holy Spirit has to make do with the limitations of your yieldedness hear me the Holy Spirit has been forced in many lives and many churches to make do with the level of yieldedness so we have not been able to see his power as a generation we pray for 100 people and maybe one two three four just one testimony one miracle there is like a multitude of people hungry and thirsty and imagine that they are standing before a tap and it is coming drop by drop do you know how you starve those people of life imagine someone coming with his bucket to receive water from you and it is coming drop by drop the problem is not the dam the problem is you have not known how to open that spiritual valve the Holy Spirit brought you to church tonight because some of you your family members cannot wait again they cannot wait again if that power flows drop by drop all of them will be dead before you become yielded you need to expand that capacity when you open a tab sometimes in less than one minute it fills the bucket you carry yours and another person can come you carry yours and another person can come for many of us we have piled people like around the queue because we as those conduits and those vessels are not yielded enough
What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear so, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.